Hi, today I want to talk to you about innovation in defense and the strong relationship that the defense sector has always had in driving innovation at great speed. In the United States, of course, through the 50s and 60s and later, across the entire span of the Cold War, agencies like ARPA and DARPA funded projects like the Internet, and also the space race benefited greatly from military innovation. For example, Werner von Braun from Germany had come to the United States, had been brought here, and was the, uh, the principal scientist behind the Saturn V rocket, which ultimately got us to the moon. So whether it's GPS, whether it's technologies used in cellular telephony, whether it's the internet, whether it's many kinds of computers, whether it's satellites, many of these technologies that we commonly use today for consumer and commercial use were actually funded and created for military use. So defense is, has indeed been a great driver of innovation and, and technology. Today, I want to give you the example of how innovation and the relationship between defense innovation is coming together in Turkey to create across air, land, sea, space, and beyond all these different domains, a set of platforms that will form the future of many militaries going forward. Turkey has a defense budget that is under $30 billion. And if you contrast this with what the United States spends on defense, somewhere close to 850 to a, even a trillion dollars by certain estimates, if you include some types of spending, $30 billion is a very small fraction of what the US spends. But Turkey, across multiple areas, for example, autonomy with its drones, for example, with weaponry, with its ballistic missiles and uh, rocketry technology, and also with sensors, electronic warfare, radars, has really advanced the state of the art. So let's talk about a few Turkish weapon systems and Turkish defense programs to give you an example. The Turkish industry started developing drones not too long ago, just two or three decades ago. And one of the commercial companies, uh, Bekar Technologies, has now created one of the best-selling drones in the world, the TB2. Beyond the TB2, they're already developing a maritime-capable TB3 drone, which will allow them to position these drones on the Anadolu landing helicopter dock, the Anadolu LHD. Now, what does this mean? Well, first of all, pilot training, which is a huge factor in today's Air Forces, with autonomous technology no longer remains a factor. So the 200, 250 hours of pilot training time that has to be invested today by the world's prosperous, rich countries, by many Western Air Forces, which give them an edge, that edge can potentially be eliminated. Secondly, drones are a smaller platform in general than manned aircraft and they only need to carry what they need for the mission to be fulfilled. They don't need to carry any extra payload to sustain the pilot. Because of their smaller size, many more of them can operate from an LHD class ship compared to manned aircraft. So this makes a smaller aircraft carrier viable that still has the ability to field a large number of airframes. The TB2 has become the best-selling drone and Turkey has already become the largest drone exporter in terms of the maximum number of export relationships, nearly 30 countries which are now buying Turkish products. But beyond this, they're also developing the Kizil Elma, which is going to be a supersonic drone in its ultimate form. And this drone is designed as a proper UCAV or an unmanned combat aerial vehicle which will also be capable of carrying out air-to-air -air missions. Now, the drone alone isn't going to be enough because in the future we're talking about system warfare, systems versus systems, where one platform alone, one fighter versus another fighter, isn't what you should be thinking about. You should be thinking about all the systems that come in from both sides and how they collide and how they gain advantage over each other. So electronic warfare is one element of this. And uh, again, Turkey has made tremendous investments in systems like the Koral, 
uh, which is an electronic warfare system, companies like Aselsan in Turkey have made tremendous leaps forward in this electronic warfare technology, as well as in sensing technology. Now, the Kizil Elma is being designed as a stealthy aircraft, and eventually even the engines that it uses will be made in Turkey, but today they will be imported and they will be uh, partnerships with the Ukrainians and others. But you can see that just in developing this one aircraft, what it carries forward is AISA or electronically scanned array technology. Uh, it, it develops electronic warfare. It develops, again, air, the airframe shaping to minimize radar returns or stealth technology. Uh, eventually, it'll probably also lead to metallurgy and chemical uh, progress because the radar absorbent materials that will be used to coat the airframe will eventually uh, be developed in Turkey as well. And then, of course, the weapon systems, which is another great area of innovation for the Turks. Just last week, for example, Turkey announced at their recent defense air show that they had developed the world's first drone-fieldable supersonic ballistic missile. So the larger Turkish drones will now be able to carry two of these missiles, each with a range of roughly 200 kilometers. Now, this is a standoff munition that can be deployed and delivered from a drone. These are just a few examples of all the innovation going on in Turkey. As I mentioned, they're developing a small aircraft carrier, or an LHD-class ship. They're upgrading submarines with entirely new sensor packages. They're developing ASA radars. They're developing stealthy aircraft, including a fifth-generation TFX fighter jet, which is a manned fighter jet being developed by the TAI, the Turkish Aerospace Industries. And of course, they've suddenly become, from literally nowhere over the last five or six years, one of the largest drone exporters in the world. They're developing munitions, standoff munitions. They're also developing autonomous loitering munitions. And of course, USVs or unmanned surface vessels and also subsurface vessels. So. You can see how $30 billion of a defense budget and commercial profits that accrue from export of all of this technology is supercharging Turkish industry. And my point here is not only is this impressive from a defense standpoint, but it's also impressive from an industrial standpoint. And finally, all of the revenues that are accruing are going back into developing skill sets in Turkey. This is a great example of the symbiosis between industry and defense and how it can be used to carry an economy forward. The software developers that are building the autonomy software for Kizil Elma will be available within Turkey to develop other things and perhaps even commercial projects later on. The propulsion technologies and the precision machining that's being used to develop engines and turbofans for both drones as well as manned aircraft those skills will be available for other applications of metallurgy and fabrication. So uh, the Turks really give us a great example of a national policy around defense export being used expertly to assist skills development within the national economy and also to facilitate export. And it's a great lesson that many countries all around the world can really learn a lot from.